Good morning, and it's Dan back with another video, and this morning I'm going to be talking to you uh, about the Warsaw Uprising in 1944, and we're going to take a look at this uh, Polish uh, single ration. This is their equivalent to a single MRE. Uh, Nate and I previously checked out their 24-hour ration, and uh, this one's been sitting around for, I think, down here for a couple of years now. Probably should get to uh, checking it out. Before it gets beat up anymore I think some things may be crushed in there like crackers or something this one's uh, dated <clears throat> from 2018 so uh, I think these are only a couple years shelf life so but it's been down here in the cool uh, dry uh, weather of my museum room in the basement so uh, we'll see what it looks like uh, after I talk a little bit about the Polish uprising I wanted or Warsaw uprising in Poland in World War II I wanted to tie some cool history about the Polish military and uh, to this uh, rash, you know, it's a modern rash, it's not from World War II, but uh, as some of you, most of you probably know, Poland was invaded by Germany in 1939 during World War II. That was the beginning of uh, the main part of the war. And although Poland had a very well-trained military, they weren't prepared for the type of warfare the Germans would use against them, and they were pretty well uh, quickly overrun and the country was actually split in two uh, partly controlled by Germany partly controlled by the Soviet Union uh, because early in the war Hitler had aligned himself with the Soviets even though they're ideologically completely different and really hated each other it was a just mutually beneficial thing they wanted to divide up Poland so that would later change you know Hitler would invade uh, the Soviet Union during Operation uh, Barbarossa, and um, you know, that's a whole nother video. But the Poles would not sit idly by while the Germans occupied their country and continued to murder mass amounts of their countrymen through the Holocaust. So, when the Holocaust was taking place, you know, that's where you know they were taking people to camp, things like camps like Auschwitz and so forth. Um, and they were moving Jews into the ghetto. There were several separate ghetto uprisings. I could talk about those in a separate video. But, um, you know, these were all being organized by the Polish Home Army and the Polish Underground with support from the Western Allies who were dropping in supplies and uh, operatives where uh, possible to help uh, fuel this resistance against uh, German forces. So in August of 44, there's this massive uprising in Warsaw, Poland, which is the capital. And they begin fighting the Germans, uh, using anything they can. They would steal weapons as they went along. Um, and the plan was the Polish Home Army wanted to co coordinate this with a Soviet advance. You know, this is late in the war. The Soviets are pushing, east, are pushing west from the east. You know, the Germans are in a defensive uh, mode at this point. And they're thinking if they can get support from Stalin, they can push the Germans out of Warsaw and out of Poland. Um, however, Stalin doesn't want that to happen because Stalin wants to control as much of Europe as possible post-war. And he doesn't want a nationalist force within Poland. He wants them to be eliminated so he can take control of Poland. So he refuses to support the Polish uh, uh, resistance up, uh, uprising in Warsaw, despite uh, Western allies pleading with Stalin, um, you know, to help because this could help shorten the war, and Poland is allied with the West. So, uh, but Churchill, you know, organizes airdrops to the Polish resistance, so they're getting supplies and weapons, um, you know, but ultimately, they don't end up having the ability to completely defeat the Germans. And the uh, resistance ends in October of 44. Um, the Germans eventually retake the city using massive air power. And the Germans would hold the city until January of 45, um, until the Soviets push you know, west and drive them out. Uh, but it was the, in the end, the uprising wasn't a, a success, but it was the largest uh, movement by a uh, resistance force against the Nazis during World War II, and it's still remembered today, you know, in Poland, 
Uh, there's a song by Sabaton about it, which is a uh, Swedish metal band, and um, I'll probably put that song in the intro, but I just thought that was something that would be cool to tie to this ration and talk about. So um, that's, you know, just kind of a quick overview of the Warsaw Uprising. If you want to learn more about uh, the Polish Home Army or the ghetto uprisings in Poland World War II, there will be some links in the description box below. So give me a moment and then we're going to set up to look at this ration. All right, so I see we got this Polish single ration. It says individual food ration SR. And that's, I think, the only... Nope, there is some... In... So it's an English and Polish. And um, we do train with the Polish military, as in, we as in the United States, but other NATO nations as well. So here's what it says it has. Hungarian-style goulash, 300 grams, smoked sprots and oil. Oh, God, sprots. Well, I'll tell you what. If you check out one of my first ever videos, it was a reproduction Russian ration, and it had sprots in it, and they were horrid. But someone who commented on the video said they looked like they were spoiled, but I don't know. Uh, we'll check out these sprots, but check out that video. Like I said, it's one of my early ones. It's not the best. Special hard biscuits, honey, lime-flavored instant tea drink concentrate with green with green tea extract, cranberry-flavored fruit and seed bar, chewing gum, coffee, candy, vitamin C candy, spices, salt, ground black pepper, paper napkin, wet wipe, toilet paper, Plastic bag, disposable spoon, drinking straw, flameless chemical heater, and that's pretty much it. So I'm glad that that was English and I have to get Google Translate out because, well, Google Translate leaves a little bit to be desired. But there's the front of this packaging. Very similar in size to the U.S. MRE. So um, let's go ahead and check this out. Go ahead and open it up here. Okay, so let's see. We got smoked winter sprouts. See that? So this is just kind of like civilian off-the-shelf food in a military package, which is pretty common of a lot of European rations. They're not necessarily specialized foods like uh, in the USMRE that's made by government contractors. Uh, that's your honey. Little tin there. Here's those uh, hard biscuits. I think I've seen these same type of biscuits in uh, that Lithuanian ration that some other Eastern rations Nate and I have checked out. There's our accessory packet. We got our candies, napkins, our little plastic bag, and all that type of stuff. There's our uh, spoon and some more napkins. Second pack of crackers. There's this big instruction, a oh, speedy hot single heater. So that's our, uh, so it's like a big pouch. Looks like you would put your mains down in there and heat it up. So we'll, we'll use that, see how that works. This is our goulash, I assume. That's probably gonna be pretty good. That's our, that must be our uh, fruit bar. And this is our, our beverage. There's that. And then there's just a regular old style restaurant drinking straw in there. That's kind of cool. So uh, that's everything kind of laid out there. Let me uh, get it a little more organized and get set up to start that heater. And uh, we'll check this stuff out. Okay, so let's see what it says on how to use this heater. 
Activated heater produces heat and steam. Do not use near open flame. Use well ventilated area once activated. Do not reseal sleeve. If heater sleeve is damaged, do not use the heater and its elements are not intended for human consumption. Always activate heater with water before disposal. Keep out of reach, children. So, let's see what we do with this. Okay, so it's like a jumbo USMRE instant heater. So, we're going to go ahead and tear that open. Here, open plastic bag. We're indicated above the insert unopen insert unopen mule box on heater. Add water to sleeve where line is marked. That's a tear line. I'll fill water here, so that's what we're gonna go with. It. Let's get that goulash in there. It's probably the fish. I think you can just kind of eat room temperature on those crackers and be okay. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll check that stuff out while we get this thing going. While we're going. We'll overfill it. I always have a tendency to overfill these things. And that usually messes them up. Sliding it. So you pull the sleeve over and you slide it into that paper box. And it's supposed to start doing its thing. We'll shake that up. Get it back in there. set that back against the, the Blackhawk and uh, see what that does for us. It seems like it's steaming up already. So, Alright, so I guess let's, uh, even though I'm not kind of leery of the sprots, we're going to go ahead and check out those, I guess, next and see what there is to say about those. So, I said those ones in that, that came in a can all the way from Russia, not so good. Those were also, oh yeah, look at that. Hmm. I'm not a big fan of like canned fish or sardines, so I may not eat all these. Woo. Wow. Much like the Soviet, oh, I should say they weren't really Soviet, they were modern, but much like the Russian ones I bought, as part of that reproduction Soviet fashion. Those things are strong. Man, it smells like when a dead fish washes up at the beach, and that's what that's just what that smells like. When it comes to fish, I like fresh fish. If it's canned fish, I'll eat some tuna fish out of a can, but I'm just not a fan of this type of thing. Oh boy, where's Nate when you need him? He'd be all about this. He, he'll he, Nate eats anything, but I guess you know you only live once. Let's try it. If you hear me pull a steed and go ah, off off camera, you know what happened. And I'm just gonna start off with a little bit. Okay. Those kind of have a lemony flavor. And while they aren't overly off-putting or anything, they're definitely much more fresh than those other ones. Um, that's all I'm going to eat because I'm just not a fan. They're not bad. If I was really hungry, I would eat them, and I think they'd be okay. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'm going to feed those to my cat. Like I said, nothing against the Polish. I'm just not a big fan. But... Let's try one of these biscuits. These are always pretty good, so. They're hard though. These are like true US Civil War hardtack. And if you had some soup or something, it'd be great. Those have a nice rye flavor, and I love rye. Um, rye bread on a sandwich is just great, and that's, that has a nice rye flavor to it. Let's try some of that honey. There's nothing better than good quality honey. Oop. 
and that honey's crystallized a little bit but that's not bad honey is a forever food it lasts forever does not go bad they, they have discovered honey in ancient Egyptian tombs and it's still it's still consumable you know, it hardens you can reconstitute it with a little water and uh, and it's totally okay so I'm gonna clean that spoon off I don't think I want fish flavor with my honey so put a little bit of that on that cracker and we'll see what that's like so yeah, this, I mean, one thing I will say about the Polish rations is they're very high quality. That's a great combination there. Um, I will say, if you have bad teeth, you may want to soften those crackers or something. So here's that beverage base. Let's see what we got to do with this. This does not have any English translation. Let's see if it says anything on our external package on how to uh, reconstitute this. It does not. So, I think what we'll do is we'll open it up and we'll see. I'm just going to add a certain amount to it, and then we'll see what it's like. There it is. It's like little granules. It smells very strong of tea. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this little, what is this? This is a 10-ounce bottle of water, but I used some of it on the heater, so maybe 8 ounces. Seems reasonable. It's a resealable pouch, so that's kind of handy. You can seal that up real tight, shake it up, and uh, get your beverage. And I imagine if you wanted to, you could heat that too in there. If you wanted a hot drink, you know, it gets pretty cold in Poland. I would think that would be uh, pretty refreshing. So we'll let it set up for a bit. While it's doing that, let's check out this fruit bar. I'm pretty excited about this because some of these European granola bars, they're top notch. Oh yeah, this is very similar to ones Nate and I have seen before. They tend to have this thin, almost communion wafer-like coating on them. And uh, we've seen that in other rations. So it looks, I mean, really cool, really high quality. Now, outer coating does kind of remind me of a commuting wafer. Hmm. Now, that is good. That is very good. This ration would be very satisfying. I mean, in the field, everything about it is high quality. I said the sprots, not my favorite thing, but if you like those, a lot of nutrition there, a lot of protein. One of those oils are good for you. I got the honey. That's a good energy pick me up. This granola bar, cereal bar, I think they called it a fruit and seed bar, is fantastic. This is my breakfast, by the way, so I think I'll be set for the day. Got a lot of work to do here on the farm, so starting it off right with some high quality military food from our Polish allies. So. Let's see how that heater's doing. Mm. It's not real hot yet. Maybe, like the U.S. ones, it's kind of lost its... Same trend. Don't feel much. And I'll eat it cold if it comes down to it. Used to that anyway. So, we got those candies. I like coffee candy, so I'm going to try that. I might save the other ones for later. But, you know, I don't want to eat a bunch of candy in the morning. But those would be nice, you know, if you're out on a patrol or something and you just wanted a little, little pick-me-up maybe between meals. Just have a little piece of candy to suck on. So, let's try out. I think I had this in the 24-hour Polish ration meat and I did, and it was pretty good. Hmm. 
Yep. It's very good. Real strong coffee uh, flavor. And that's kind of surprising. There is no coffee in this ration, but I guess you get the tea. So that's equivalent. So I guess that's kind of what we got here for a minute. Let me pause the video. Let me check on that heater. Get some of this stuff cleared out so we'll be ready to check out the main. Okay, so that main never really did get hot. Um, we could heat it up using a little sterno or something, but you know what? I think a lot, of, <clears throat> for me, when I was in the Army, most of the time we just ate our MREs as we got them. You know, if, you were, if it was hot out, they would be hot anyway. But, um, you know, you don't always have the luxury of getting all fancy, so that's okay. We're just going to do that. So what I've concluded, and it dawned on me with this, is you do just leave this in the pouch, and then with the tea, and then you use your little straw, and that's how you drink that. I don't know if the Polish issue, uh, what kind of mess kits they issue. Obviously, I'm using a U.S. mess kit, and uh, well, save the rest of that candy for later. I don't want to mess with the tea, but in any case, I said, I don't know what kind of mess kit, kit or mess cup they would um, issue, but for this, you're just meant to I think just drink it right out of the pouch with that little straw. So let's give that tea a taste. I love tea, so. Oh, okay. So that's actually very good. It's like a, a lime tea. Instead of like a lemon tea, it's got a lime flavor, which is what I believe it said on the instructions. I didn't shake it up quite enough, so there was still some of that granulated, sugary stuff in the bottom. And I just, slurped up a big mouthful of that. Without that, it's a very good, that's a very good instant tea. And that's uh, very refreshing. On a hot day, man, if you had some cold water, that would be great. And like I said, if you wanted to heat it up and put it in that uh, ration heater when it's working, I would say that would also be very good hot and be a real refreshing thing. So you got this little pole tab on the tin, and that's how you open it up. Goulash is good stuff, man, so I'm kind of looking forward to this. Not a typical breakfast item, but that's okay. Oh, man, it smells good, even though it's cold. So there's that. You got your meat. Looks like some peppers in there, sun-dried tomato, maybe. So... That's an interesting combo. There was still some of that fish sauce mixed with that honey. Ugh. All right, so let's take a bite of this goulash. That's very good. Um, the beef in there is very tender. Got that nice tomatoey flavor. Um, it's not spicy or anything. Um, you could obviously do it up with some salt and pepper if you'd like. Um, but that's very good. That would be really a nice hearty entree. Um, quality on that is definitely better than anything in the U.S. MRE. But, mind you, this is just off-the-shelf canned food. You know, it doesn't last long-term like an MRE does. I think it's only maybe two to three year shelf life tops. You know, U.S. MREs are meant to last much longer than that. So, um, I guess that's pretty much all we got with this Polish ration. But like I said, the goulash, excellent. That honey with those crackers is very good. This cereal bar, that's tops. Um, the fish, much better flavored than what was in that ones I had in that previous ration. Almost a lemony flavor. I said, not a huge fan, but they're not bad. The crackers are great. I think if you got that uh, goulash heated up real good, maybe cr crumbled up some of the biscuits in there, that would have given a nice crunch. That tea, super refreshing. And uh, as expected, this was a really high quality ration. I think these pop up on Emory Mountain from time to time, so check those out if you want to try one. And that's all I have for now.